How are you action figure enthusiasts out there? JC here with another TNI toy review. And today's review is in association with JediInsider.com, your number one news source for everything Star Wars. And for today's review, I'm going to be taking a look at the brand new first wave of Star Wars three and three quarter inch figures based on the new Star Wars animated series called Resistance. The series currently airs on Disney XD. It was just picked up for a second season and the figures will officially start being released on January 15th, though they have started to show up on the pegs at Target stores. They'll be warned you might not be able to check out with them until the 15th of the month because again, that is the official release date for these figures. Now the first wave consists of two deluxe figures, which basically means it's a figure and a droid. Those cost about $14.99. And then we get six basic figures, which cost about $7.99. That's at least what they're costing at Target stores. And they do not have any droids or anything like that, just basic accessories. Now these are very basic figures overall, like we've seen in the past with the five points of articulation and everything. They come packaged in pretty standardized looking card backs. You've got the Star Wars logo up at the top. You do have individual artwork for each character up in the corner, which is nice. And then the figures are clearly displayed with the names down below. Again, it also tells us these are based on the Star Wars Resistance animated series. Now on the back of the packaging for each one, we have again, individual artwork for each character. And then we have brief bios for each of them in multiple languages. So the first wave consists for the deluxe figures. We get Jarek Yeager, or yeah, I think it's Jarek Yeager is how you pronounce his name. And he's kind of the mentor of the show. And he comes with his droid bucket, which I think is probably one of the cooler characters. He's got, he wears a helmet and and he looks like a droid with his outer casing removed. So I don't know, it's just kind of an interesting looking robot. And his official name is R3B7. Then we've got, for the other deluxe figure, we've got uh, Poe Dameron from the movies, voiced by this actual actor from the movies, and he comes with his droid BB-8, though in the series BB-8 actually hangs out more with Kaz th than Poe Dameron. Now, for basic figures, we've got Kaz, who is the star of the show. He's a young pilot that's sent in by the Resistance to spy on the First Order on this platform, and again, he is the star of the series. Then we've got another character by the name of Sonara San. I think that's how you pronounce it. She's only been in a few episodes and she's kind of a pirate type character. We've got uh, for the First Order, we've got Commander Fry who wears a gold armor, um, kind of like Captain Phasma, only it's gold as opposed to silver. Whoever created this character I think probably watched a lot of the classic Battlestar Galactica where you had you know the silver Cylons and then the higher ranking gold Cylons. Then we've got Tora Doza, who is kind of, Kaz has a crush on, she's a hotshot pilot. She's also the daughter of the guy who runs the platform that everything, you know, where the show essentially takes place at. We've got just a normal First Order Stormtrooper. And then finally, for the basic figures, we've got another new character introduced for the First Order. We've never seen him in the movies or anything. His name is Major Von Reg, and he is a hotshot TIE fighter pilot that wears a special red armor. I don't know why it's red, but, but it is. And then he also flies around in a pretty cool looking red TIE interceptor type vehicle, which I'm sure Hasbro will eventually get around to releasing for this line. Okay, so let's get these figures open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at all the figures in the first wave outside the packaging along with their accessories. Okay, we'll start off with looking at Jaeger. Now for accessories, he comes with a blaster, just a hand blaster, which is done with a dark gray plastic. I don't recall ever seeing him actually use a weapon in the show, maybe uh, once or something, but you know, it's not something he generally uses, but they've have included the blaster. So you've got that. And then he also comes with a helmet. He is a pilot, though he doesn't really fly much these days. He's more, again, kind of just the mentor figure, but they have included a, a pilot helmet. Now, because this figure, because he has this hair that sticks out, you wouldn't be able to put a normal helmet over this head sculpt. So what they've done with this one is they've just made it so it's an actual different head sculpt. So what you do is you just pop it off. It's on a ball joint and you pop on this alternate head and it just snaps into place. So it is kind of cool that they included that. And I'm glad they didn't try and make it so you stick the helmet over the head because that would have looked too big in my 
my opinion. Now for the rest of the figure, I think the head sculpt is really good on this one. I think it's dead on to how the character appears in the animated series. So I think they've done a good job with that. And then he's just got this brown coat with some metallic silver and this little marking here on this side on his, on his chest. And you've got the lighter beige on the top and on the lower arms. And then he's wearing kind of an olive looking pants with the black boots. Basic uh, articulation with all these figures, just the five points. These are geared more towards the kids like we've seen with the previous animated series figures like Rebels. But, you know, again, I think the likeness on this figure is very good. And because Jaeger is a deluxe figure, he also comes with the droid Bucket, who is another new character introduced in the show. And I think they've done a pretty good job with this. So this character, this uh, droid, he looks like his outer casings has been removed. He wears this pilot helmet all the time. Now the helmet is not removable on the figure. And one thing I do want to note is he's got a very thin neck. It is articulated, so you can do it back and forth and everything. But you know, when I was trying to see if the helmet was removable, you know, I felt like I could easily snap that uh, little neck piece off so just be careful the the legs move you can rotate and the feet have some articulation as well and then this middle leg you can kind of push up into the figure or you can pull it down so that's nice and then the detailing on this is pretty good oh and also these outer legs are a little bit articulated where they attach to the figure you can kind of pivot them up and down a little bit so this droid actually has a pretty good uh, wide range of motion and does fit nicely scale wise with with the Jaeger figure. Then the other second deluxe figure again is Poe Dameron. So this figure comes with uh, a helmet. So this is the normal kind of helmet we generally see in the Star Wars line where you just put the helmet over the head. It's not an actual extra head sculpt and it's done with a rubber material and you've got the white helmet with the blue markings and you've got the resistance or the alliance symbols on it. One at the top and then one on the uh, side. He's also got the visor with the yellow uh, uh, translucent plastic and the little communication piece that goes over his mouth and it does fit pretty good over the figure though you know you do want to be careful because you can sometimes rub, rub paint off when you pull these things off it is a pretty tight fit you can see the head sculpt on this one is not as good as like the Jaeger figure uh, the paint is a little uh, messy it looks like with the eye and everything so not nearly as good on uh, a head sculpt on this one um, again more animated look with Poe Dameron than what we see with the normal movie figures he's got some again the resistance symbol there on his chest and he's got some line work sculpted on his vest and then the little controls for his breathing apparatus when he's you know flying so that's on his chest and that's just painted on there you got some sculpting detail in the back he comes with a blaster which you do see him use in the in the series and it's done with a metallic silver i do like the metallic silver blaster that they use with him and we've seen this kind of blaster with uh, normal the normal movie figures but i do like that metallic silver and he can hold the blaster in the left or the right hand he does not have a holster though so you you, if he's not holding it, you've got to set the blaster aside, which is a little, a little disappointing. I believe he has a holster in the animated series. And he comes with BB-8. That's why he's a deluxe figure. So this is a smaller looking BB-8 than what we've seen in the normal movie line. And again, has a more animated feel to it with the bigger black eye there. And he's got the little white antenna that sticks up. The head does move, but that's the only articulation BB-8 has. You can do it back and forth and you can do it left to right and you can rotate the head there. So um, that's pretty much it. And then the rest of the figure is just a, a solid ball with the white and the orange and the metallic silver like we've seen with previous BB-8 figures. But the thing to note about this one is it is smaller than other BB-8 figures they've done for the normal movie line and just has a little more animated feel to it. Okay, now switching to the Kaz figure. Kaz comes with a helmet similar to Poe Dameron. It does actually fit over the head. You've got the green and again the visor with the yellow translucent plastic. You've got a little uh, metallic silver antenna on the side sculpted and you've got the checkers. So pretty accurate to what we've seen in the series. The head sculpt on this one is solid. Uh, paint applications look pretty good. You've got the lighter color hair here on the bottom and then the darker color so I like that and again does look pretty true to how the character appears he's wearing this green coat so you've got the darker green and the lighter green you've got some sculpting on the coat and then you've got the gray on the shoulder pads he's wearing black gloves even though he only uses I think a blaster one time or at least one time so far they've included that 
Poe Dameron gives him a blaster in one of the episodes. So it's the same kind of blaster Poe Dameron comes with. And again, it's done with a metallic silver and he can hold that in the left or the right. He does not have a gun holster, but because he doesn't actually normally carry a blaster around, you know, that's actually pretty accurate that, that he really probably shouldn't have a, a holster. The coat is a separate piece and you've got the gray shirt underneath. You can't remove the coat, but you know, it is kind of a separate piece on the figure, which is nice. And he's got the belt with the metallic silver and the dark gray. He's got some uh, green striping on his pants and then he's wearing the black boots. It would have been nice if they'd included BB-8 with this figure and then given the Poe Dameron figure, the red female uh, BB droid that, that he basically hangs out with in this series. I think that would have been cool. I'm sure they'll get around to doing that droid eventually, but I think it would have been cool if they'd made Kaz a deluxe figure with BB-8 and then given Poe Dameron the red droid. Okay, next up we've got Toradoza. So I like this figure because again, it's very accurate to how the character Character appears. I think they've done a good job with the head sculpt on this one. She's got the hair with the little balls that stick out and because of that they've included a second head sculpt for the helmeted head. It's not just a helmet you put over this one which is nice and I'll, I'll switch them out here in a minute. But the detailing on the figure is pretty good. She wears this flight suit every time you see her. So uh, again she's kind of a hot shot pilot on the platform and she's got you know so this flight suit is pretty accurate with some nice sculpting detail. You know if th these figures had a little more articulation I would think these were really nice figures overall you know they do again just have the five points of articulation she has these shoulder pads which you can still rotate the arm around but it does limit some of that movement you know you have to kind of push it back they're made with a rubber piece so do be careful with that because you might you know pull this off eventually if, if, if you had a lot of wear and tear on it and you know this chest piece is sculpted and she's got the blue suit and the boots and everything so like I said very nice detailing and then you can pop off the head here and pop on the second head which is a helmeted head now this one uh, is kind of hard to get the head to pop on the neck is not articulated but it, the neck does stick out so it kind of bends a little bit because it's made with a rubber material when you're pushing that head sculpt on so just be aware of that but the helmet looks good I like that you can see her eyes through the visor um, it is again a translucent visor with the yellow plastic but I like how you can see her eyes inside the helmet and then the detailing with the helmet is pretty episode accurate Next up, we've got Sonera San, and honestly, this is kind of an odd choice for the first wave of figures, because so far, at least, this character, as I recall, really hasn't made a major impact on the show. I'm guessing that eventually she will. She, you know, the overall likeness is good with this figure, like with most of the figures in this line, looks very true to how the character appears in the show. She does wear a helmet, and this is a removable helmet, so, um, you know, she has the ponytail, but that doesn't uh, prevent you from putting the helmet on. And I've got to say the helmet actually lines up pretty well so you can actually see her eyes through the slits there on the helmet or the big eye slit there on the helmet. And the helmet itself, it's done with kind of Boba Fett-like colors with the green and the yellow and you've got some silver on the back there. But it kind of reminds me of Boba Fett as far as the colors go. And the actual design of the helmet kind of reminds me of something you would see like a skiff guard wear. Now again, you can just take it off and the helmet's made with a rubber material and then you've got a very accurate looking head sculpt with the purple skin, the blue markings and the greenish lipstick. She's got dark gray hair with the ponytail and the red uh, rubber bands there, which look pretty good. She's wearing a coat, which has that mustard yellow and then is a kind of a darkish greenish gray and then a darker color shirt underneath. She's wearing a little necklace that's painted on there and then she's got the white with the, the belt and everything. Now this is the one figure in the line that has a working gun holster. I don't know why she was lucky enough to get a working gun holster, but she does have that. She also comes with a blaster done with the metallic silver like with the Poe Dameron and the Kaz figures. The, the design of the blaster is different. It's a little uh, thinner and, and again is, is, is kind of a new looking weapon. Okay, and then rounding out the final three figures are all from the First Order. So we've got just the basic First Order Stormtrooper wearing the white and black armor, you know, very similar to to the movie versions that we've seen. A little more animated feel to him, but again, the overall design is pretty basic and pretty much what we've seen before. He does come with an Imperial Blaster. It does not attach to the figure in any way. There's no slits on the side of the leg or any way. So, you know, you can't store it other than having him hold it in the left or the right arm. I will note that his blaster has more black on it than what we generally see with the First Order. Generally, their weapons are, are more white than black, but this one definitely seems to have more black on it. I don't remember if that's cartoon 
accurate or or what but but definitely it's a little bit different than what we've seen in the movie and then we've got the the fry character which is the gold kind of the gold version of captain phasma phasma is in the series and i'm sure they will get around to doing a phasma figure for this resistance series but right now we've just got the gold uh fry and he's got the the bandolier or not the bandolier but the shoulder pad with the the gray and the black and then he's got the gray and the black in the midsection and on the uh, middle of the arms there which i think actually is a nice contrast with the metallic gold that they use you got the little ranking symbol there on the chest like we often see and then the little dot and the two lines on the back like we always see with the with the stormtroopers so overall pretty nice detailing he also comes with an imperial blaster there's no way to attach it to the figure other than have him hold it in the hands and like kind of phasma has the metallic silver blaster this guy comes with a, a gold blaster and then the final figure is the tie fighter pilot major von reg and you know i think this guy's pretty cool looking my guess is we will end up getting him again i you know i really have a hard time believing that hasbro won't do his ship since it's kind of unique with the red colors they probably will just repaint a tie interceptor with the red colors and this guy will be re-released but because he's kind of a new and unique first order character a lot of you will probably want to go on and get him in the basic line i think the detailing is pretty good he comes with a blaster it's done with a black plastic it is uh, a thin design and then again he has no holster or anything so you just have to have him hold it in his hands he's got the black for the eyes i got a little paint blemish on mine uh, not too major he's got the first order symbols on both shoulder pads he's got the uh, the chest piece with the controls that are done with uh, various blue and white colors and then on the back you've also got the square piece with uh, sculpting detail there and you've got the darker and red and the lighter red throughout you've got some sculpting detail on the knee pads and everything and he's wearing uh, gray boots and and gray gloves okay now scale wise i think they've done a pretty good job here they're not all just the same height so you've got like the the male adult characters and they're all pretty close to the same height though you can see like jaeger is actually a little bit taller than poe dameron uh, jaeger is closer to the same height as as von reg and then you've got the younger characters who are, you know are more kids like the the kaz and the, and and the tora so kaz is a little bit taller than tora but kaz is is smaller than both poe dameron and and jaeger so that's a good uh comparison and then you've also got like Sonera, which is a female character she's an adult and everything but but she is taller than than like uh you know the the Torah figure here so and then of course the droids which which are shorter than than anybody else okay and then just for a few comparisons first of all we have a movie version of bb8 with the new animated version and again you can see the movie version is bigger and then here are some comparison with other droids so we've got the animated version of chopper from the rebels as well as r2d2 and c3po Here's a comparison of the new Kaz figure from Resistance with Ezra from the Rebels animated series. And here's additional comparisons between the Rebels animated series figures that Hasbro did and these new Resistance ones. And they all have the same kind of animated look and feel to them. Now here's a comparison of First Order members from the movie along with the animated counterparts. So you know, like Phasma here, which is actually an articulated version from the Black series, is, is much taller than like uh, Fry here. And then we've got the clone. This is an articulated Black series uh, First Order Stormtrooper, which is a little bit taller than the animated series. This is a five points of articulated First Order uh, Stormtrooper. And, you know, these two are probably in similar scale so you know, if you want to mix and match these they're not 100 percent but but you could probably make it work and then finally here's a comparison of the new animated poe dameron with the movie version okay so that's my review so overall i've got to say these are pretty solid looking figures for the most part the only exception to me is the poe dameron figure which mine at least the paint applications aren't very good with the head sculpt and I, I i think it is the weakest figure in the bunch but all the others i think look very true to how these characters appear in the new animated series and if you're a fan of the series even though for me personally i don't think at least so far this new series has been nearly as good as the previous star wars animated series but if you are a fan of the series and you're interested in these characters 
characters, I think these are very solid figures for the most part. They look like the characters. The only downside, of course, is the limited articulation, but that's the same with all these figures. So if you've been collecting any of these uh, Star Wars animated series or movie figures, the basic ones at least, you're used to the five points of articulation. Now these figures, the official release date is January 15th. You might start seeing them in the wild a little bit sooner than that, but again, the official release date is the 15th. We'll have a full image gallery up at JediInsider.com. There'll be a link in the video description below. As always, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you're so inclined, please like the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification so you're alerted every time I upload a new video. And of course, you can also follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. I have links to all those in the video description as well. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you later.